See, I'm produced out here. I got notes and everything. So, you see, you, you know, Alicia is better than mine. When I first did my thing, and there was so many people on, my camera flipped and it was just a closet. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I wasn't mad at you, though. You got some nice gear. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo. Man, I was so nervous. But I, the, the story the story that I was trying to tell was um, right. but Will Smith. Yeah, go ahead. I'm so, you know, I'm in the middle of getting ready to do this big deal. And I get the Will Smith um, offer. And to this day, you know, his last big hit record, it was a record called Switch. And okay. they hit me up. Didn't want to pay my full fee, by the way. Which was cool because there's a lot I actually owe to Will. You know, just just in encouragement and things that Will has done as an artist and has done directly show me di direct things as, as an artist. So I was like, yo, whatever you need it for, let's do it. So we did the record switch. Um, big shouts to uh, Omar Rambert. He, you know, set the whole thing up and you know, we did the record, but my pu publishing company was like, if you do this record, it'll be the worst thing you could ever do in your career. And we want to rethink the deal. Wow. You'll never recoup this deal if you do this Will Smith record. I was like, what do you mean? It's like this record, it'll be terrible for your resume and you should not do it. So I'm like, I ain't gonna let no body that don't know me and know who I'm, where I'm from, tell me what record I'm gonna do and what record I'm not gonna do. Right. You know, anybody knows a publishing deal. Whatever money they give you is the money that they think you were about to make anyway. So it's not like I wasn't gonna see that amount of money. I just wasn't gonna see it that quick. Um. So fast forward, this record becomes number one in 15 countries by the way um the the result of i think it's you know it was it was a um an nba finals theme it was a result of at least 10 um, major commercials around the world so it would and the success of the record made me totally recoup my publishing deal within that oh, year. Yeah. Yeah. But most people don't never recoup. So I'm like, I'm saying all that to say is stick to your gun. You know what I'm saying? If you really know, you know, what type of, of, of worth you have and what type of things you can bring to the table, don't let anybody push you away from that. Because they don't have the vision that you have. Um, right. I think a lot of artists get caught up in that. And I don't, you know, so I try to encourage people, yo, just do you. Do what you feel is the best thing to do. You may make a big mistake. You may make the best success in your life. You never know. But you, you'll you feel better knowing that you did you than knowing that you were stopped and you couldn't do what you wanted to do. You know? Right. And, and, that, and that, spreads, that spreads throughout... Um, the industry just as well as, as the music does. And what's crazy is, you know, remember we're talking about how you do the um, the Breakfast Jam, right? Mm -hmm. And when you asked me, he's like, yo, reach out to some West Coast artists. It was real easy for me because every time I talked to somebody, it was like, yo, can you do a beat for me? I was like, yeah, you do it, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> you might have to write it like that. Yep. But, um, and then shout out to Will Smith, man. One thing I love, about Will Smith, especially right now, is like he's he uh, he represents the culture so well. Yeah, you know, it's like to you know to done the things that he's done and to be as big as he is. He you know he definitely holds true to his roots. and yes. he represents it well. So I'm, I, I appreciate Will Smith. And he that. embraces and he embraces the new technology where other people may be his age and be like not messing with anything new at all. Right. He embraces yeah, he just jumps in it. Yeah. And he doesn't take himself that serious. Yeah. Um, so great segue for that. Um, 
So we have this game we play on the show. I don't know if you know about it. It's called Who Said It. Okay. Right? I'm going to and it's for, the hip -hop, it's for the hip hop heads. You know, you, you, you know you're the hip hop. And you know your hip hop. I don't know nobody's rhymes, though. I'm going to lose this game. Uh oh, but you know, this, this might be hard for you. You're going to play it, though, right? I'm going to play it, but I'm going to lose. You see? No, it's, I'm, it, it, this one ain't too hard. Um, I suck at games, man. I'm telling you. There's no game I win. I, I suck. But go on, let's go. And then I'm going to introduce you to my lovely co host and wife, Tyler Teasy. Hey. Um, say what up, Tyler Teasy. Hey, how you doing? I'm fine. How are you? So I'm good, thanks. Nice to meet you. you this well. is how the game works. Tatizi is going to say a line from a classic hip hop song. Okay. And then she, you know, I didn't, she doesn't even know what song it is either. I just give her the lyrics. Okay. With, with no punctuation or nothing. So she's reading it the way that it's on paper. Okay. So so she, there's no cadence, no anything. She's just reading the lyrics. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'll give you, here's an example, first one, a real easy one, just so you can see what it does. All right. Do you think for a minute that this is it? Your party is bogus. Yo, it ain't legit. Who said it? I have no idea. Can you hear her? I heard her. I don't know. <laughs> one more time. I know our audience know this one. Say it one more time, Tati. All right. Do you think for a minute that this is it? Your party is bogus. Yo. It ain't legit. Who said it? MC Hammer. Correct. And I that know was, uh, the biggest guess of my life. <laughs> Did you really guess that? Guess that is the biggest guess I've ever taken in my entire life. I did okay. not know it. But keep let's hey, I may be able to guess it better. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this one should be pretty easy. Let's hear it. The next one. The next one. I dropped down to the floor. And they did not waste no time. They shot right through the door. So I had to go for mine. Who said it? Uh, Sound familiar? Yeah, it does, though. Yeah, a lifeline. You can look at the comments. Somebody's going to come up. Say it one more time, Santizi. I dropped down to the floor. And they did not waste no time. They shot right through the door. So I had to go for mine. Who said it? I'm not looking at the comments. Somebody said easy E wrong. I don't even know. I passed. So if you don't have it, I'll play it. And when you hear it, it should sound familiar. Nine millimeter by Boogie Down Productions. I did. I, I don't know why I couldn't. Oh my God. Tell you right. the worst. <laughs> yeah, you know I started too. <laughs> So I said I should have gave you one of your lyrics, I, because I actually I, I looked at it today because I have um I have one of your songs in the in the Who Said It queue. And if I, you gave me one of my lyrics, I guarantee you I would be like I don't know who that is. <laughs> you should have did it. I, damn it, I, I thought about it. All right, all right. On. Then you probably will not know this one, but I'm gonna give it to you. The deconstruction okay. of Kwame. You ready? Yeah. This was a really big song, too. It don't matter. I'm not going to know it. <laughs> okay, let's go. You listen to the music, not the lyrics. Don't make me peel your potato. Don't make the devil your neighbor. What? I might not be nothing to you, but I'm the shit on this label. Who said it? You lost me at potato. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if the audience know. One more time, say it. Don't make me peel your potato. Don't make the deal. Oops. Don't make me peel your potato. Don't make the devil your neighbor. I might not be nothing to you, but I'm the shit on this label. Who said it? None of that run. <laughs> Somebody just said it. I'm not looking. I'll take my loss. I'm not well, you can look since you don't know. Everybody got it. Everybody got it? Oh, Mystical. Yeah. Mystical. Check it out. Ain't my fault. 
So this is this is not for you. This is for the audience. This should be and this fairly. This is gonna be the one I know. Okay, speak up, Tati. Let's hear it. All right. Days at the sight of a method. Dive beneath the depth of a never-ending verse. Gasping and swallowing every last letter. Vocalized liquid holds the quench of your thirst. Who said it? That sounds like something out of one of them. Sexy poetry slams, <laughs> right? It might as well be. Come on, y'all. This is this is for y'all to win the shirt. Kwame, if you know it, I don't know that. <laughs> Somebody said digital underground. You know we ain't that smart. <laughs> we was never that smart. So method man, it ain't method man. I will right, say it one more time, time season. Days at the sight of a method. Dive beneath the depth of a never-ending verse, gasping and swallowing every last letter, vocalized, liquid holds the quench of your thirst. Who said it? I'm going to give the party people one more chance. Anybody out going to make a guess for this t-shirt? I can't wait to hear that over the actual beat, because that sounds like a love poem if I ever heard one. Somebody said outcast. Close, but not quite. <laughs> <laughs> No, I wasn't Karis one. Now I wasn't Brother Jay. Somebody said it. Anyway. Grave diggers. No. All right, well, that was the chance. Let me, let me play it for y'all. Here we go. It was actually you guys. Things at the sight of a method. I believe the depth of a never ending verse. After that, swallowing every last letter. Vocalized liquid holds the quench of your thirst. Reason for the rhythm and for course is unknown. Different individuals are battle with the show biz. Auditions are gathered, but the soul would just rather hold a count at three and in the end, leave it after. Who is that? Wow. Yeah, everybody gonna jump on at the end like, they are so. My man Greg, my man Greg Pastore, he he had it. He said De La Soul. Yeah. Wow. Oh, somebody. Okay, so whoever I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to scroll back down. Greg said it. Greg. Yeah, Greg, Greg said it first. Okay, we'll catch it, Tom Teasy. Greg, as a matter of fact, Greg, DM me so I can get your information and your size, and I get that out to you. The winner. Greg you feel Pastore. Me? All right. So before Greg. I let you go, um, and thank you, Tom Teasy. You're welcome. You did a great job. Great meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Be safe and be well. You too. All right. Um, so a lot of um, you know some of the younger cats they don't realize or even you know have never experienced the fact back in the days when you would produce with somebody or do a song with somebody, you actually had to do the session with them. You know what I mean? We didn't have the technology to send shit. So yeah. before I go, leave, leave leave me with a gem. Tell me about one of your favorite sessions, you know, as far as one of the bigger records that you produce, and to kind of tell us what happened in the session and why it made it so memorable. Um, most of my, the most memorable session was not my favorite one. Okay. So I kind of want to tell that. Okay, tell that one. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to blow the artist up. I did a record. You gotta say the name if you're gonna if you're gonna do the story. We gotta know. I gotta say the name. I mean, okay. If you don't, want, if it's a great story, you don't have to say the name. But let's hear. It. 
Well, no, let me tell a, I'm going to tell a Method Man story, and then if you got time, I'll tell the other story. Oh, yeah, I got time. I ain't got nowhere to go. So, Method Man, <laughs> um, we were working on the album, the 421 album. Okay. And um, some of my favorite records I've ever done was with Method Man. And um, working on these albums. But Method Man was so meticulous. Like, I'm not... I'm, I don't smoke. I, I don't drink. So okay. sometimes you have to, as a producer, be. In I the, do. <laughs> sometimes you gotta be as a and as a producer, you have to be in the atmosphere of the artist. Right. So meth would come through. I ain't never seen so much weed in my life. Okay. My eyes, my whole face feels like it felt like it was melting off. But we were making these dope records and meth was so meticulous with his rhymes like it would be okay. like he would write four lines down and then he would think 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 thinks like eight hours later another four lines down <laughs> the next day another four lines down so and we were doing this in miami most of the records we were doing in miami so for, and it was in the winter time, you know. So for me, I was just on a Miami vacation while this guy figured out these lines to write. I'm just having fun, but it was so dope to see an artist really take his time and energy into writing these rhymes. And I and I just thought it was it was because the rhymes were incredible when they were finished after these two day lines would come out. They were super, 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 um, super dope. And yeah. then, um, the bad story, I'm not going to yeah, let's this, get out. this young lady up, but I remember this, I was doing a, a rap record, um, and, um, for a female rapper and okay. she had a guest singer that people knew at the time as on the hook and i remember walking into the studio on 40 46th street in new york city um at, i remember this clear as day 11 a.m it was clear no clouds 73 degrees i remember i don't know why i remember this detail 11 a.m and you know you would have to go there you would have to relay down the beat you know, the, the female rapper, she came and she did her part. But then, um, like, by 6, the female artist, the, the R&B artist shows up. She comes in. She knocks out uh, a verse, right? And then she goes, oh, I'll be right back. I got to do something. So she leaves. She comes back around... 8 30 9 o'clock yeah knocks out a little bit of the hook and she's like oh, i'll be right back and she leaves comes back 11 11 30 finishes up the hook a little bit then she's like oh i gotta go to this party she leaves comes back two in the morning finishes the hook when I tell you, I told you I walked in at 11.10, right? Yeah. I walked out of that studio the next day at 11.10, exactly on the dot. The weather was the same. Everything looked the same. That was the longest 24 hours of my life. And it felt like 24 hours only existed in that studio. Because once I stepped out, it was like I never, you know, it's like I never lost a day. That was probably yeah, the craziest same. experience because this chick wanted to just party. You know, she was hanging out with dudes. It was just all this craziness instead of just getting the record done. But we needed the record to get done so bad. It was just me, the president of the label. We all had to yeah. sit in there. Literally, like somebody just said Groundhog Day. Literally Groundhog Day. And, 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 and the funny thing is when you see artists that act that way, yeah, she's not even out anymore. You know what I'm saying? Um, the, the rapper never really blew up. The R&B artist 
kind of blew up and then disappeared based on shenanigans and and the the bigger artists all the big name artists i've always worked with always had real professionalism it's always the new jacks or the ones that are coming up that gave that had the craziness in the studio people are saying eve no it is not eve at all by any stretch of the imagination yeah that's like i said all the big yeah all the big so so you know um you know that was probably my craziest one of my craziest studio uh experiences all right so um somebody had a question they said uh what what digital underground song do you feel is most influential and why yo i love sex package yep like that whole that whole album that first that, that that first album to me i think the musicality that was in that album was greatly appreciated the the, the production the um the whole thing of it you know of course everybody loved humpty dance and you know and, and same song i love those records as well but Listening to the first album as a whole, I remember we 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 really wanted to rock with y'all. And, yeah. And so when before we got on tour, we pretty much memorized the album wow. because we wanted to know who we were getting down with. You know what I'm saying? And that was like yeah. that with anybody. You know, being kids from Queens and Brooklyn, New York, and all that, a lot of stuff didn't. You know, New York just played New York stuff. So yeah. when we're going on tour with y'all, um, and and um, how we were introduced to you guys. That same show that I told you I did the benefit for today, Video Music yeah. Box, they played it. Do what you like. They they played Do What You Like way more than Humpty Dance. So, right. so, and if I'm not mistaken, isn't do do what you like the first single? Wasn't that the first single? It was. It was the yeah. First so, single. so I was I zoned in on do what you like, and then zoned in on the album and the in the, the production quality of the album. And I remember, you know, just having real extensive conversations with Shock about the production and and understanding. Like to me, it was a very heavily Parliament funkadelic influence not necessarily beat wise even though there was definitely the, the, the funkadelic beats but the the production aspect of the album you know nice. um and and so the whole you know the thing as a whole just definitely resonated to, with me so and then uh somebody had another question they said how is it with three times dope and then my question is how the hell did you get tap money as your dj <laughs> from being from philly well, you know I mean, that's that's I'm steady that. You know, shout to shouts to my man of uh, EST. Definitely three times dope. We were like a little squad, man. It was like myself. We used to call each other the Legion of Doom, and we were working right. on an album. It was gonna be me, Redhead Kingpin, and Three Times Dope. Um, and they had an artist, Larry La, and and we all rock with each other like personally mm -hmm. we were a squad like we used to roll out together um right and 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 that came through just mutual respect you know i went to i went to i grew kind of grew up with redhead kingpin and um with three times dope um always being in philly i used to you know our rex got a lot of love in philly and yeah. um so I would be out there all the time. And but the tap money situation, that was a very special situation because he was down anybody knows my DJ Tap Money, he was down with Steady B and Cool C and they had the, the thing right. with Kill Top Hustle. Top Hustle. And yeah. before my first album came out, I was on the road with Kid and Play and Herbie Lovebug. They had a show in Richmond, Virginia, and we got there. With, and it was Kid and Play and Steady B and Cool C. 
And when we got to Richmond, it was a, a blizzard. So we got the show got canceled and we were stuck. We were literally stuck at the venue. Um, and so we were all just chilling out. And, and I remember sitting with um, Tat and Steady B and Cool C and just talking to them. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm about to come out. Um, um, I'm about to come out. You know, my name's Kwame, blah, blah, blah. It's my album, The Boy Jeans. And I had like a, a demo, um, the cassette, like the promo mm -hmm. tapes on me. Yeah. So I gave everybody a tape. I was like, yo, man, just check it out. Let me know what y'all think. And I gave everybody my number. But me and Tat got real cool so my original dj b flat who, who's no longer with us um r.i.p b flat um we by the time the second album was being was rolling around brian wanted to just do other things and you know the tour life the show life the in front of the camera like that just wasn't his thing man and um he left the group Two days before the tour with y'all, uh, he left the group. And um, uh, the album was done pretty much. Everything was done for the second album. We were just about to go on tour. Only You was, um, was I think, just dropped. And I called Tad up. And I was like, yo, man, I know you fell out with Steady B. And my DJ just left. What do you think about going yeah. on the road? And he drove up to New York, and it's been 30 years, man. It's been 30 years we've been rocking. That's dope. Shout out to Tap Money. That's my guy. Like, yeah, man. <clears throat> Tap Money is one of the easiest person people to get along with. And, you know, like anytime that I'm in Philly, if I hit up Tap, he always try to make a point to come see me. Yes. Like, yep. Yep. That's, that's my guy. Um, before I let you go, um, tell the people about. The collective that you guys have, you know, with you, Chuck Rock, Danny Dane, Special Ed. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, real quick before I do that, um, that's the thing. Like Tat, Tat is a great people person, and I and I remember one time, and I regret it. Um, actually, we were, I don't know. I think we were in L.A. or we were in the Bay. I don't remember where we were, but I had to do. I think we did a show. And then I had to do something. Like, I had to be at an after party, or whatever. And I think Tap reached out to you. Uh, I reached out to Pac. And I don't remember what record Pac was recording. But Tap hit me. He was like, yo, I'm going to the studio to see Pac. You want to come? And I was like, well, I got to do this, this, that, and the third. I'm going to try to make it. But, you know, tell Pac I said, what's up? Um, he said that you were going to come through. Um, I said, yeah. oh, damn, I want to see everybody. I'm going to try to make it. And then I never ended up making it. And it was not, that was probably the last time, because I think he put Pac on the phone, if I'm not mistaken. And that was the last time I was able to speak to him. And, and, and not shortly afterward, um, he passed. So, you know, that was something that, that I um, always regretted. I wish I would have been able to, to check everybody out, you know, that, that night in the studio. Um, but the collective that, that we have is called the alumni and, um, right. the alumni is myself, Chubb Rock, Dana Dane, special ed and Moni Love and Tat. And we get on stage together. And sometimes Greg nice from nice and smooth. Um, we all get on stage together at one time and we just go record for record for record for record for record. We enjoy, we bring the audience up. We, you know, we just have a great time and we have a great show. And, um, um, you know, the show is like an hour and 20 minutes, man. We just have, we just do hit after hit after hit after hit and, and we have a great time. So, so that's the alumni. So hopefully when this whole quarantine thing just shuts down and we get back to the, to the real world, Hopefully we can come out to, you know, different cities um, near you and, and show you that show. You know, when y'all need, need the West Coast Division of the Alumni. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, guy. come on in it. Come on There's in a guy. It, man. Yeah, man, that'd be dope. That'd be dope. That'd be real dope. Come on in it. So, you yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's dope because, like I said, I have um, everybody you name, I have some experience because we've all 
toured yeah. and done things together. So we're all one big family anyway. So yeah. Yeah. You know, when I when I first heard about it, I was like, this is amazing. Yeah, so, no, we, so we have a good time. You know, it's it's funny to get sometimes it's funny to get promoters to bite on it because it's like we, we gotta convince them like yo you're getting five people for the for the almost for the price of well not really for the price of one but you're getting it at a good price you're getting a yeah. full full thing you're getting the full thing in right. one time and it's it's dope it's real dope yeah you get a package deal yeah it is super dope because i can just sit off and damn the hits and then lastly you know tell the people again about the uh, the breakfast jam when the next one will be and if you have any inkling of who might some of the people who may see that day well the, the what i try to do every you, this whole um coronavirus excuse me shutdown um is allowing us to reinvent ourselves if we if we allow that energy to us and so my thing was I want to bring it back to a time when we were younger. You know, the worst that we had to deal with is a damn report card or or, or whatever. And right. the thing that I used to love to do as a kid, I used to I like to represent who who I am. So you see, you're always going to see some toys in the background, some comic books, some things like yeah. that. So I wanted to do this thing called Saturday Morning Tune. I know what you mean. Yep, yep. See. <laughs> So, so you know, I just want to represent me. So on Saturdays, outside of the breakfast jam, on Saturdays I do this thing called Saturday Morning Tunes real early, just like how the cartoons were. I spin classic hip-hop. I spin classic cartoon themes. You know, I blend them all in, and, and I just make it that experience. And then maybe once a month or once every other month, I try to... Um, bring artists together for the, the Saturday morning breakfast jam. And, you know, we did to the third one, hopefully in May, like maybe around, we're looking at May 2nd. I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm partnering up with a mental health organization called um, Silence the Shame. So figuring all that out. And it is an Atlanta based organization and it's run by a, a, a former music executive, Shanti Das and, Shanti has worked with and knows everybody. So I think we're going to try to pull in. We didn't have a lot of Southern artists last time. So I think we're going to try to pull in some dope Southern surprises as well as West Coast, East Coast. Um, so that's the goal. So, so it's in the planning phase right now. Trust me, it takes about a month to really plan it out and really get people to commit. And people don't really commit until like two days before. So it's like, okay. yo, dude, when I tell you it's the most nerve-wracking <laughs> experience, it's like the best way to describe it is like is if I decided to go outside, build a rocket ship from scratch and see how far I can take it into the atmosphere without crashing. It's that yeah. type of feeling. So, so... You know, we're just gearing up for the next one at this point. But it has to feel good when it takes off, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, no, when it lands. <laughs> when it lands. Yeah. When it takes off and when it lands. Yeah, and I, and I always notice, before you go, I always notice that you do have the action figures and everything in the back. And I wanted to ask yeah. you real quick, because you my guy, if you have these, because if not, the um, one of the companies that I work with with, with my merchandise, uh -huh. they actually have them, so I can get it for you. Hold on. Uh, I always promote for my people. You got the, uh, the Pop Rocks, Chuck D. You already got that one? No, I do not have Chuck D, but what I have... I or the Flavor Flavor? I got Prince. I got okay. Rick James around here somewhere, but I don't have any of the hip-hop ones. So Are you know, you know the, the Flavor Open Vinyl? No, that's, those are dope. Those are dope. Yeah. So I can look they, have some, they have some dope Pac ones as well. They got some Biggie ones, some Pac ones. Um, they yeah, when I when I do my performance on your, your show, I put out the Mac Dre one. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's a collected item right there. Yeah, I need I need them I need them to make a Kwame one and we then we'll be real good. 
Absolutely. Man. Well, I, the, well, the company I work with doesn't make them, but they distribute them. Okay. Yeah. So I go, you know, next time I holla, I, I look out. So I'm, dope, dope. Thinking about, I'm thinking about that when I saw it. So like, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. Well, man, once again, you know, I appreciate, you know, you taking the time and hanging out with your guy. Thank you, Always man. Always good to catch up with you. And one thing that I will say is, you know, with as much success that you've had in this industry, you've never changed. From day one, you've always been the same guy. Thank and you, I man. Appreciate Thank that. you. That's, the, you know, humility, humility is the key of life, man. It's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not the super religious guy or anything like that, but I do know life finds a way of knocking you down when you, when you feel like you're too big for shit. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. so, so, you know, it's, it's always my, my, my go-to is always to keep humility on my back man, and, and, and never, and never, for, you know, just never forget the grounding and, and, and where things come from, man. I don't, I don't, I don't play the trying to be too fly stuff. Man. It's not, that's not even it. Yeah. And the cold part about it is you'll fly nigga anyway. <laughs> Hey, man. It's all great. Well, man, make sure, you know, everybody that's, that's, that's still rocking out with us, definitely go follow Kwame and Kwame Vision. Yes, Check Kwame out Vision, you know, yep. Jams that happen and just support my guy. You know, yes. I'll, I'm always here for you if you need me. Thank and you, I'm going to for that beat one of these days. Yo, whenever you need it, man, and when this thing opens up, just come on through. We 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 in the same vicinity, man. So Yeah, I know. We all have been talking for a while about we're going to connect, but I, I'm going to come out here. Yep. About less than an hour away from me, so yep. I'm down. All right, man. All right. All right. My God. Later. Peace. There you have it. Uh, Kwame, that's my guy. He's always kept it 100 the whole time. But, you know, I, I really just wanted him to um, show that you know, there's more than one way to survive in this industry and in this business and, and to do great things. A lot of people, when their first attempt, you know, as an artist falls off, they kind of just fade. But Quad reinvented himself. He came back better than ever and did the goddamn thing. Um, I appreciate it. Smooth, Carlin, always, Sarah, Ema. I'm going to shout y'all out. Mike Millions. My guy Jay Stalin was in here. Great bars. What up, though? Shout out to the uh, DMV. LT. Oh, LT was in the building. Shout out to LT. Um, you know, so if y'all got any last questions or anything y'all want me to shout out, hit me with them because you know this draft started. I got to go represent the designers. But I want to make sure everybody, you know, this is just one part of the Going Way Back show, the, the live interviews, but also the weekly report and Time Teasy's Old School New News. You can check it out at the Going Way Back show YouTube channel. Please go subscribe, you know, comment, like on the videos, and just um, holler at me. What up, OG Grip? I see you. Thank you very much, my brother. Um, but yeah, sponsored by DU Merch 19. You get to dope digital underground to what you like, hat, and all that. Um, shout out Tay Wall. Oh, what up, my family? What up, with you, dog? Balance Entertainment. <laughs> Tantiji's in the building. Tantiji got a message for us. What are we? What are we saying, Tantiji? The website, the merchandise website, the host. Oh, okay. Um, Tantiji, want to remind you guys. That the full name of the website sponsored by dumerch.com and 90shiphop.com. Please visit and get your dope classic digital underground and classic artist gear. How about that? We walk. I see you, Miss Brooks. What up, though? Um, Derek Mallory. Well, you know, I'm putting my glasses back on so I can, so I can lean so far in. How about that? OG Grip. What's the name of your new record? So I can shout it out. It's my guy. Appreciate you. AJ, top 10 models. What up? Appreciate you. Lord Rap. What it do? Uh, how you say that? That's the N2 and B. Thank you, thank you. Hope I didn't butcher the name. 
I hear my dog click clacking in here with his paws. You know what I mean. Pick that up. OG Grip. Rob, what up, cousin? You, um, y'all definitely want to tune in next week, too. Philly going to be in the house. My man Freeway, Philly Freeway, representing Philadelphia, will be on the show next week, same time, Thursday, 4 p.m. Now, I believe that's April 30th, next Thursday. So definitely come back and check your guy out. Um, what else we got? What else we got? Shout it out, y'all. All right, Rob, I hope everybody's doing well out there. Give me a call if you think about me. Call you goods and sometimes. All right. Gripper. Jojo, appreciate you. <laughs> Rewap. Still in Cincinnati. Carlin. Appreciate you. All right, y'all. I'm about to sign off and get back to this drive once again. This is the Going Way Back Show Live with your man Money B, Tom Teasy. Shout out to our DJ, DJ Always. Please visit uh, 90shiphop.com or dumerch.com to get your official license, digital underground and classic hip hop artist merchandise. I will see you guys. If Oh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If not, I will see you guys right here. Next Thursday, 4 p.m., Freeway, State Property Freeway, Philly Freeway will be on the show live. So check in. No skull. Down with the Vikings. <laughs> anyway, lighter gang, bang, bang. I'm out of here. All right, y'all. Peace.